our guests who will give us you know the internal workings what exactly is going on he has written for several newspapers rising to the position of editor-in-chief and the president of the nigerian guild of editors in 2015 he was sworn in as a senior special advisor to president muhammadu buhari on media and publicity he's a journalist with more than 27 years experience print digital and other media our guest tonight is mr femi additional and he joins us live in our Abuja studio mr additional Thank you for joining us on Politics Today. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, are you running for any office yourself? <laughs> running to my house. You're running to your house? <laughs> yes. Uh, why? I mean, it's, it's a free world. Why, why aren't you choosing to run? Yes, I've chosen to run to my house after I finish serving. So that's the running you're doing? Yes, that's the running I'm doing. But you're a member of the APC, aren't you? I work for an APC government. I have sympathy for APC. That's so what I was are you a card carry member of the no, APC? No, no. Why, why aren't you a member of the APC? I'm not a politician, actually. <laughs> because we've seen other aides yes. who have joined the party. In fact, I, picked, they've picked forms and they're running for a Senate, I, I'll tell House of you reps. that APC is my preferred party. It's the party I like. I like. If I didn't like the party, I wouldn't come to work for a government run by APC. Mm. APC is my preferred party. And... Uh, uh, any day, the party has my best wishes, but am I a card-carrying member? No. It's, no. it's quite interesting that you're not a member of the APC, but <laughs> it's good you've cleared the air because it looks like membership of a party is a big deal now. But let's talk about that circular, which was released, you know, yesterday. And literally everyone was copied in that circular. It's, it's quite, it's not usual to see that much people copied. We, in fact, the National Population Commission was copied, <laughs> the EFCC was copied, the ICPC, lots of agencies. And um, I'd just like you to give us a peek into the mind of the president. Why did that have to happen yesterday? Well, there's nothing as good as an idea whose time has come. The time had come for that to happen and it's happening. You can do things prematurely, you can do things too late, but you can do things at the right time. That was the right time for it to happen. Right, so mm -hmm. the question there will be, why didn't it come earlier? Why yesterday? Because this debate had been on, and I know you said time and again that the president feels the pulse of the people. He knows, you know, what the agitations are in public. For a lot of people, this should have come weeks ago. So why did it take that long? No, no. When the time for something has come, that is the time. Things can be done prematurely. Mm. And if it's done prematurely, then it's not the right time. And then if it's also done too late, it's also not the right time. But it can be done at the right and proper time. And I believe this is the right and proper time for this to be done. Okay, so let's maybe put this in better context and put our you know, viewers also in the loop. So these are the people affected, some of the people affected by that circular, uh, which was signed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, uh, Mr. Boss Mustafa. And there you see that list, the Minister of Transportation, the Minister of, uh, of Niger Delta Affairs, the Minister of Labor and Employment, uh, the Minister of Science, Technology, uh, the Minister of State for Education, who, by the way, incidentally had resigned before that directive came on so it will seem he's leading the pack in that in that light of course we have the minister uh, of justice and attorney general the minister of state for petroleum resources uh, the minister uh, of mines and steel that's the minister of state and uh, the minister for women affairs so those are some of the people affected there are reports that some others may have resigned as well like uh, the minister for niger delta affairs those reports are out there can you confirm that aside the minister of state for education others have resigned yes i've seen those uh, reports that uh, minister of science technology and innovations Minister of Niger Delta, that they resigned. But I wouldn't know at this point because their letters of resignation will not come direct to the president. It will go to the uh, secretary to the government of the federation. So as it stands from where you sit, only the Minister of State for Education has resigned? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say it is the office of the secretary to the government of the federation that can give you an authentic uh, information on who has resigned and who has not yet. But help us understand the, the chain of command here. So it goes to the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, and then it lands on the President's table, am I right? Yes. And yes. you have 
access to the president. Oh, sure. So sure. how come you don't know yet? No, if the secretary to the government of the Federation has not transmitted it to the president, how would I know? So again, as it stands, at least from what you know, only the Minister of State for Education has resigned. I didn't say that, and I wouldn't say that. The information that is in the public domain is that three ministers have resigned. And it's only the office of the SGF that can confirm or deny that. You know, the president usually is someone that, I mean, we've seen that he values his team a lot. He seems to, you know, protect his team, uh, team members, his marshals, as it were. And I would like to know, before the president gave this directive, did he maybe have a meeting uh, with his men and women saying, well, this is the direction we're going, okay, so when we make that announcement, I don't want you to be shocked. Did any of such happen? A meeting is holding 10 a.m. tomorrow. No, I'm saying before. Everybody the that is exiting the cabinet is meeting with the president 10 a.m. tomorrow. So that shows you that the president values his men and women. No, I'm saying before. The, if, the it, was given. if it's held before, it will be individual. It will not be group. So a lot of them perhaps were not even aware that the president was going to give this directive. Well, it's, in, it's the prerogative of the president to do it. I wonder, because this happened during FEC, and I mean, it was visible to, to, to the press, seeing the faces of the ministers, mm. really. Uh, what was the atmosphere like when that announcement no. was made? You see, FEC meeting had held, and we were closing. And that was when the president, like now, addressed the gathering that some were interested in running for positions. He was specific about the position of the president. He said those who had collected for to run for office of president, it was advisable that they tendered their resignation. And uh, it was in good order for those who had purchased forms to run and for government. Mm -hmm. One, those who had uh, signified their intention to run could concentrate on their ambition. If they stayed in government and they were running their ministries and then they were also running their political campaigns, there's distraction. They can't concentrate. So it was in their interest that the president said that. It was also in the interest of government in that government's work will not suffer. So, so you're saying that the president also was fully aware of the implications of holding on to an office and seeking elective office at the same time, saying that there will be conflicts of interest, as it were. Yes, naturally. And uh, is, there is also the legal angle. That is not fully determined yet, but we know that there is the danger of everything being voided later if we, the APC was not careful, because there is the popular section 84, 12, 12 yes. of, of the Electoral Act. It's not fully determined now, but then what if the highest court in the, in the land determines it and it runs against the party, mm -hmm. then you lose everything. So it was safer mm -hmm. to, to, to err on the side of court. I mean, since we don't even know which way it will swing, some say that 8412 is still in the electoral act. Some say, well, it's been struck out. But, you know, apparently they've taken it to the Supreme Court to be decided. But let's talk about this circular now that was released. So you said, is it an advice, a directive? Is it an order? which must be carried out, or it's just an advice? Well, the good book says that the king's word is powerful. When a king speaks, there's power in it. When a president speaks, it has a force of law behind it. So it doesn't, like there's a saying that a tiger does not proclaim his tigritude. A president doesn't have to come back in and shout, he just needs to say it. And uh, the force of law. So the president is ready to bite on this one? He doesn't need to bite. I'm sure nobody will wait to be beaten over this. <laughs> because it, it is law already. It has taken effect. But there was something the president said after that meeting when he made that pronouncement. He said, anybody that needed to discuss with him on the issue that needed further clarifications or that has issues to raise could come see him. And that's why we saw the CBN governor meeting with the president. Today. Maybe. Well, when the president spoke yesterday, the CBN governor was not in the category yet then. But you saw 
the Minister for Labour and Employment who said he will consult with his constituents and he will consult with the President. The President left that window open. So, so really, they, they maybe have a choice here. Because I, I'm looking at this uh, circular now, and it says that Mr. President has observed and noted the expression of interest and intention by you know, those people concerned. Consequently, he has directed that the affected officers holding or holders aspiring to run should tender their resignation. So does it mean that all of these people who have picked their nomination forms and expression of interest forms, whether they like it or not, they have to resign? Or can they say, you know what? Maybe I'm not pursuing this elective office again. Can they stay back? Yes, the, 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 we can't preempt the president. He left a window of consultation open. And when uh, those affected utilize that window, whatever they discuss and agree to will become public knowledge. So you're, you're saying that there might still be some leeway for people who want to pull back and say, I'm not running for office. It's not unlikely, but uh, I'm not saying it could happen. What I'm saying is that what the president say, said is not a decree. It's not a military decree. Well, you said it's law. Oh, yes, it's law. But it's not a military decree that is done with immediate effect. Well, the circular You see that actually, he, he even gave a window. The last paragraph yes. says the contents of the circular and incidental directives takes effect immediately. Yes, it begins to work immediately, but the terminal date is 16th May, which is Monday. Incidentally, that day is when the, uh, the result of the screening of the APC you know, primaries, the, the aspirants, that's when the results will come out. So I imagine the results, let's paint a scenario, if the result comes out in the morning and maybe it doesn't favor <laughs> <laughs> some of the aspirants, can they then say, okay, let me go back to my home, or at least the home ground, and continue with the work. Well, the, the president that can determine that. It's the president that can determine that. But I, 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 I reckon that anybody who was serious to run in the first place and had paid, you don't pay, you don't throw away 100 million naira, do you? But why, why did the president wait for them to dole out the 100 million before he said, you have to resign now? No, 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 no. There is a way you do things. There was that uh, issue about what was the lawful thing. The Constitution says when you want to run for a public office, you quit whatever position you are holding 30 days before the, election. before the election. And that is the subsisting thing. That's the extant thing for now. Until the court also determines what happens with Section 8412 of the Electoral Act. But you also said that the president realized that there will be the conflict. And it's moral. Yes, it, it is well. moral. So, it I is mean, the moral. law aside, yes. the morality was glaring. And, and the challenge now for a lot of people is, why wait for them to pay it's 100 million? Right? It's the proper thing to do, actually. But it is only when a man has paid that you know he's serious. It is only when he has paid that you know he's serious. There are some, if the f uh, form could be obtained without payment, a lot of people will obtain it. And at the end of the day, we say, oh, we didn't pay. So we were not actually serious. So this was a master stroke from the president? Oh, it, it, it is, but it's the right thing, it's the proper thing. I think a lot of Nigerians maybe will better understand the personality of, of the president from some of the recent trends we have seen. But tell us, there's, you know, concerns, or at least there's talk about maybe some... Uh, some ministers who are not happy with this. They, they feel, you know, led on and then at the tail end. In fact, there's a video online now that is sort of describing what may have happened. Some people getting into an arena and the door is shut and they can't leave again. So speak to that. Are that, all the that, ministers happy or at least no, okay no. with this decision? That, that, there is nothing like leading on in this because it was voluntary. Nobody was coerced, nobody... But they all met with the president, at least most of them, and they came out and said, well, the president don't be too, has... Don't, don't be too sure. You said they all met with the president. Don't be too sure. No, no, I said uh -huh. some of them, I changed oh, okay. it in some of okay. them. Okay. But at least we saw them come out and say, well, oh, yes. I've spoken with the president, I've informed yes. me, him of my ambition, and he said no problem. So that was some sort of approval from the uh, president. And, and that didn't apply to the ministers too much. Maybe the governors and some other people. Not how many ministers would you count that came out to say, I met with the president. So they didn't seek the consent of the president. They then. could have sought it. They could. I know some did. Not all of them did, but I know some did. But then 
the president, as a father of the nation, will wish you well. He won't say do, he won't say don't do. He'll just give you his best wishes. Well, I know there are also talks about the president anointing, uh, perhaps, you know, selecting one of his ministers, current ministers, as perhaps his candidates. Can you confirm that? You recall the interview the president granted earlier this year. That was to, earlier this year. To your Months station. have passed on since Wait, then. let me finish. Granted it to your station. And he was asked whether he had a favorite to succeed him. He said, yes, he had someone. But I would not mention him. Because if he did, mischief could happen to that person. That shows you that the president himself is interested in the process. And he has a preferred candidate. But whether he will impose his preferred candidate is what you cannot determine at this point. You know, quite an intriguing period, I, I must tell you. But there's also the question about what happens then if those ministers resign, for example, what happens in governance. And from what we've seen, the president's first term, it took him a while to actually appoint ministers. And there are fears that if this happens again, it might take a while to appoint ministers, or it will just leave it at the hands of maybe the permanent secretaries of minister of state. Do you think there are plans to replace those ministers? It will be the president's decision, but then you must realize that the constitution requires that every state of the federation produces a minister. So the president would not like to be in breach of the constitution. Therefore, it's not likely that he will fill certain positions. But then uh, there are ministries where you have ministers and you have ministers of state. It's not unlikely that the ministers of state will continue to run those ministries. It's not unlikely that he will juggle people around. But um, the president will not be in breach of the constitution. If he doesn't appoint ministers, or if he does appoint ministers. Yes, because the constitution says that each state must produce a minister. And he still has a year to go. I think it's still some bit of distance. So we can expect ministers to replace Not them. unlikely. I wouldn't say definitely, definitively, but it's not unlikely. OK, uh, so this has thrown up a lot of issues. I mean, the central bank governor's example is also another. It's still a bit contentious. But uh, seeing the reply, the response he gave journalists at uh, just right after his meeting. Let me just see if I can uh, take that quote one more time, talking about mm -hmm. what the uh, governor of the central bank, I, I see you're already smiling to that <laughs> one. I, this is what he's quoted to have said uh, after he met with the president, saying, there is no news, but there will be news. He went on to say that, let him have heart attack, because he was asked about you know, this causing anxiety. It is good to have heart attack. I am having a lot of fun. And I wonder, is the president worried about the kind of image uh, that uh, is casting on his government to talk about whether or not the central bank governor is going to run for president, you know, civil society is coming up, the opposition also saying this is not right. Is the president aware of that? No. It will be within the right of anybody to aspire for any position, but then do it legitimately. Do it decently, do it orderly. Irrespective of the position you hold, if you want to run, then quit and quit at the proper time. So, so that's, that's what matters. So I imagine that the president is also watching what the courts might say, because this is also within the realm of the court, asking for some sort of interpretation. Will the president hold back if the court says, well, you don't have to resign uh, to run for office? No, you don't have to resign before 30 days. You must resign. According to the Constitution. Oh, okay. That, yes. So the president will then wait till that first well, Of course. That's the, next it, year, by it, the way. It will, be, it will be legal. But it's constitutional that you must resign before you run for certain offices. No, no, before 30 days. Before, election, yes. And that's next year. Yes, and that's next year. Oh, I see. So mm -hmm. the, the thinking is, well, if the court says he can stay, then he can stay up until 30 days before the election, which is next year. It will be legal. Whether it will be expedient, I wouldn't say, but it will be legal. And, and that's, that's the question, because yeah. a part of the conversation is, for example, sensitive materials uh, would be in, in CBN. This is someone in charge of our monetary policy. That is the expedient part of it. The CBN Act also says, well, if you are going to be the governor of the CBN, you should be focused on the job. You shouldn't have... You shouldn't moonlight, let me just paraphrase as, as it were. So it's not just expedient. There's a legal angle to it, the CBN Act. So well. do the right thing. Do the right thing.
That is what it means. Otherwise, you are in breach of the act which legitimized your stay in office. Do the right thing. Just to be clear, uh, can the ministers or whoever is, is in the cabinet or another agency, can they withdraw their, their interest at this point? It will be the prerogative of the president. No, no. Can they, not the president, can mm. they withdraw their interests? A interest in running? Yes, in running. They already obtained the form. They already paid. That is some commitment mm. to the process. So it's too late to back down. I wouldn't say the president may look at each situation on its merit. For instance, I know that some ministers got the forms procured for them, and they expressed surprise. Okay? If they come out and say, I didn't intend to run, this was procured for me, and I didn't say yes, it could be an extenuating uh, factor for them but the decision is that of the president interesting but what what do you think this says we see in other climes i mean it's easy for people to resign i mean just allegations of impropriety not even you know proven sometimes they say you know what i'm gone i remember a minister of state for finance at some time some years back who resigned really and people were wondering this is not usual but it's something that we could do. And I wonder, what does this say? What do you think it says about the members of the president's cabinet who seem to be holding back from resigning? Does it say anything maybe about their personality, their desire to hold on to power? No, there, 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 there's nothing sacrosanct about a position of office you are holding on appointive capacity. You are appointed. Nothing sacrosanct. No, no, but you're, you're now trying to get another job, as it were, which yeah. is elective. Yes. Well, right? So it should be a no-brainer. No so, yeah, exactly. You, you should leave. So it says a lot, then, about their person. You see, something about position is that it ends. In Yoruba, we say the Egungu Festival <laughs> will always end. You know, when we were kids, we enjoyed the Egungu Festival, but... At times it could be for a week, at times it could be for two weeks. But even the one for two weeks will end. That's the, that's the thing about position, it will always end. So if you want to hold on to it, no, you are being short-sighted. Because whether you like it or not, there's a terminal date. Interesting. And, and this is the, 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 the view that the president shares as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so as we talk about whether or not they will resign, there's always the question about their performance in office. And um, we, we can... let, let, let me add something to what I've just said. Okay, okay. Remember the saga of the former Minister of Finance, Kemi Adiyoshu, when the issue of certificate or no uh, discharge certificate came up, and eventually she had to leave government. I recall that the president also came to the cabinet meeting and said, well, if there is anybody in such similar circumstance, that person knows what to do. So that, that tells you that the president expects propriety at all times. Well, uh, Mr. Additional, we're due for a break now. <laughs> and I, think, I think we should take a breather. <laughs> but when we return, uh, aside whether or not they will resign, what it says about their personality, the whole 2023 one, is their performance in office. There's still a lot of issues that people are thinking, so you're just going to resign and leave without these issues resolved? But we'll go to break now. Okay. And when we return, we'll talk about this. Plus, we'll also take a look at what's going on in the opposition People's Democratic Party. They have given us a peek into the game plan they have for 2023. But is that the winning formula? Well, the member of the Board of Trustees joins us, Mr. Ademu Waziri. Our closing moments with Mr. Femi Adishino, the Senior Special Advisor to President Buhari on Media and Publicity. Thank you for staying with us. As we wind down now, it's important to talk about the performance of some of these ministers, uh, even though some might be resigning, but there's a legacy they will leave which Nigerians would remember for, for, for years to come. And one of them is this lingering ASSO strike. Our students have been at home for three months now, and it looks like they will be at home for even three more months now that ASU has rolled over. But then there is this window of opportunity. A meeting is holding now. The chief of staff is chairing that meeting, and we have all the representatives. It's called a tripartite meeting. And I'd like to know, is President Buhari ready to resolve this ampas as soon as possible? He spoke about it today. 
He appealed to ASU to consider the plight of students who had been home since. These are young people. There is a saying that the devil finds work for an idle hand. At that age, they can fall into all sorts of mischief because they are not engaged, they are not occupied. So he appealed to us to consider the plight of those young ones. It shows you that the president is ready to have this matter resolved and resolved once and for all. But is it ready to accede to the request of us? Not to accede to the request, it's a dialogue. That's why he got his chief of staff, who is a professor, who used to be a member of ASU, to uh, lead the tripartite meeting that was... But we've uh, seen a series of tripartite meetings, oh, Mr. Oh, we, we, if, we, if there's anything we've seen, we've seen maybe more of that. We've even seen worse. Last Nirek week, has stepped into last this. Last week, I saw something on Facebook. Elijah Shehu Shagari appealing to ASU to go back to class. Lady Shagari ruled 43 years ago. And he was appealing to us to please go back to class. So that shows you that this is an endemic issue. So the president will do all he can to resolve everything, this? Everything, everything. And we can tell our students that they will soon go back to schools? I, I wouldn't say that. Left to government, the students will go back tomorrow. But then, the issues have to be resolved and resolved conclusively. So that in another six weeks, eight weeks, six months, we don't go back to where we are today. We certainly hope so, because this will also be a legacy that the president will be leaving behind. No, no, it will not vitiate the legacy of the president in any way, because these dates back in time, it was there under Shagari, it was there under Buhari's military, it was there under Babangida, it was there under Shunek, under everybody. Well, it almost sounds like this is an excuse for it to continue, <laughs> but, but we have to anchor at this no, point. No, and no. It, I know a lot of Nigerians no. are listening. And this yes, I wouldn't say it's an excuse for it to continue. Let it be resolved right. and resolved right. Well, we'd like to thank you so much, Mr. Femi Adesina, for your time tonight. You. And we do hope that that issue is resolved once and for all. Uh, everybody hopes so. Thank you very much. Thank have you. a wonderful night. Thank you.